The JMA are also getting some new bombshell information about what may have contributed to all these problems with Obamacare. According to a new report in the Washington Post this morning, the White House deliberately delayed enacting certain policy rules in the months and the year before the 2012 presidential election. The paper says the White House did that to avoid any controversy. The Post says the rules were postponed or some never issued, including, quote, crucial elements of the Affordable Care Act that did not come out on purpose until after the election. So was this fair to Americans? Or was this even right? Congressman Tim Murphy is a Republican in Pennsylvania who's been at the forefront of the health care issues in Congress because he's also a doctor, psychologist, and joins us here in studio. Congressman, good to see you as always. Great to be back. Do you think this delaying, apparently, of, of these affordable health care rules, do you think that's, that was right, fair, or are they playing politics? With, with, it's with not fair, healthcare? it's not right, and probably not surprising. When we, uh, in my oversight investigation committee that I chair, have looked at these elements, we've repeatedly seen that the White House <clears throat> or the administration has known crucial parts of the health care plan were not ready, uh, from the website to other elements too, and they've continued to say everything's fine. Uh, don't worry about it, everything's on track. So I'm not surprised, but it is sad and disappointing for so many Americans who felt misled by a, num a wide range of promises that everything was fine and it was going to be great. Well, you've asked Health uh, Secretary Sebelius about this at some hearings. Have you gotten the answers that you wanted? Well, it's interesting that recently I asked her if they had any idea of those who have signed up. Uh, whether it's Medicaid or hey, people on uh, another kind of the, the, the federal exchange. If these are just the people who had insurance before and were canceled or people renewing or people had Medicaid before and were canceled. And she said basically they don't know, they don't have any way of knowing. And understand this whole bill was supposed to give people the health insurance they didn't have. We don't know if we're even approaching that number because there's no way of telling them the data they're collecting. Well, they say there were like 365,000 or so people have signed up so far, but they need 7 million by March. That's only, what, a little more over three months from now. You think they will get that? And what happens if Obamacare does not have the number of Americans signed up to support it. Well, we have a couple areas on that. One, are those people who are signing up now, those who had it before, and are these people who had canceled insurance, and are they getting the healthy people that they need? What's probably going to happen, we're hearing already from doctors that they're going into a cash business starting in January. But they're going to come with the assumption either you're not insured uh, because they don't have confirmation, or you have such a high deductible copay that basically your first five to ten thousand dollars is going to be out of pocket costs anyway. So come with your checkbook when you see your doctor. So you're saying we show up January first to a doctor like you if you're you're practicing instead of being in Congress, and he's going to say, "Give me cash," uh, you know, f this will be five thousand dollars. Well, that's, that's what a lot, I'm hearing from a lot of physicians. That's what they're going to do. Because unless someone can prove that they're on Medicaid or can prove that they have insurance, and remember, in many cases, the reason why you get a, a bronze plan is you have a pretty high deductible but a lower payment. And if that is $12,000 for your family, think of what that's going to mean for a family. They're, they're not going to be able to afford that care. Now, the White House says it's all going to work. It's all going to work out. They, they will support. This is going to save lives, and that people should have faith. Well, this is where people don't have faith is because they've heard that important part of the plans were not prepared before the election, that they were told you could have your insurance, you could keep it not true, you could keep your hospital and doctor. That's not true. It would be cheaper. And it, the policy, in many cases, is far more expensive, but even for those who it is less expensive, with a higher deductible and copay, they still have huge out-of-pocket costs, and that's where they're going to have some problems. And finally, one issue that's very close to your heart, and that deal, deals with mental health. The administration is uh, uh, about $100 million, they announced for mental health services. Is that enough in light of what has been happening and what you introduced this week? It, um, I just introduced the Helping Families and Mental Health Crisis Act to, as a comprehensive way of reforming our mental health system. It is broken. I'm certainly pleased that the Vice President announced some of this funding to help in rural areas and to help with community mental health centers. That's not enough. The federal government has set many, many barriers and laws where parents can't talk to the doctors or their children who are having a mental health crisis, where uh, they can't prescribe medications, where they can't have hospital beds. We need more outpatient treatment systems. Police and teachers need to be trained. And my bill really overhauls the system, which hasn't been really overhauled since President Kennedy set this up in, 19, in the 1960s. And finally, with your bill and even with what's going on with, with uh, the Affordable Care Act, do you think that our health system can ever be 
really fixed and what do we need to do? Well, I still think we need an overhaul in the system. Uh, I still think we need some, some major changes. And when I asked Catherine Sebelius this the other day when she was in front of our committee, if she felt we still need to make some changes, she acknowledged it was. And I'd certainly like to hear what those are. We still need a number of things because this has ended up being people are still uninsured, it is still very expensive, and people don't know yet if they can see their doctor. Congressman Tim Murphy, who's a psychologist, and I've always said maybe put some of those Washington politicians on the couch. And uh, get, get us straightened out down there if you can. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Jamie? Eric, that was a fascinating interview.